Hello everyone and welcome to this man Haddad here again. We go now to lab number 11 and it's going to be about the virtual link that I have just explained in the previous lecture. Okay, the virtual link will have two labs. This is lab 11 and then also we'll have lab number 12 and that's for the discontinuous areas. Okay, let's first see what is our lab diagram. And then we go through those points to make them one by one as always. Here is our lab scenario. As you can see, it's the same as the last lecture. We have area 0 and area 1 and area 2. I have just added here the IP addresses. And uh, our mission will be here that we have to make virtual link in area 1 to be transit area in order to allow area 2 to be connected to the backbone area. Because at this moment, you can see there is no any connectivity or any ABR, I would say, between area 0 and area 2 to be able to uh, be connected to each other. Okay, so this is what is the mission of uh, the lab here. And uh, let's go now and uh, go through the points to see what we have to do. So here is our lab. Before I start going through the points, let me just first put uh, the lab scenario over here. Then you can follow it on the, the top uh, right uh, of the, the screen. Okay, uh, point number one. All IP addresses are already configured as per the graph with their bridge interfaces. So what I've done also on top of this, I have just added also the bridge interfaces on each of the router. So router one has an IP as a, like it's a connected network. Huh? Just to know when we uh, share routes on SPF that they can see the networks of router one or router two or router three or router four. So as we always uh, make it, uh, uh, the bridge interface of uh, router one is 11.11.11.11. .11 .11 .11. 2 is 2, 2, 2, 2, 33, 33, and 4, router 4 is 44, 44. Okay, I also created this on the lab, but it's not shown here in the picture, but I think you can manage to follow it. So, point number 2, enable OSPF on all routers as per the graph and assign the proper router ID. So let's follow it one by one, okay? I go first to router 1. And then we see that router 1 um, has one interface, which is Ethernet 1, um, it's on area 0 and it has the bridge interface also it's on Ethernet 0. We enable OSPF, I go to routing, OSPF, instances and then here we go to the router ID. I put the router ID and then I will enable uh, the networks. So uh, because uh, router 1 has all uh, interfaces on the backbone area so I'll just say all on backbone area. Okay, so this is router 1 done. Router 2 we go to uh, routing and then to OSPF, we put the router ID 2.2.2.2 and here we have uh, uh, router 2 has on area 0 Ethernet 1 and on area 1 Ethernet 2 uh, and the, always the bridge I will put them on area for example um, router 2 I will put it on area 1 okay router C I will put the bridge also on area 1 and router 4 I will put it on area Okay, now let's create first the areas for router 2 because he has also, he's an ABR, so he has area 1 also, so it's 0, 0, 0, 0 1. You can put the area ID whatever you like, I just put it 0, 0, 0, 0 1. Okay, and now we have to say that the networks 192.168.12.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
and then the network 192.168.34.0 slash 24 it is on area 2 and uh, finally router 4 routing OSPF we put the router ID 4.4.4.4 and then we have only area 2 so I just uh, create a new area here area 2 and area ID is area 2 and then we go to networks and we put everything in area 2 so router 4 has Ethernet 3 192.6.34 network and the, the bridge interface on area 2 okay so now router 4 has to form neighborship with router 3 that's fine and then router 3 has to form neighborship with router 4 and router 2 that's okay and router 2 has to form a neighborship with router 1 and router 3 and then finally router 1 will form neighborship with router 2 that's fine so we have configured properly the OSPF as required point number 3 check the routing table in each router do you see any problem let's see if I go to router 1 now and I look here inside the routes, I will see that uh, router 1 is able to reach router 2 and uh, router 3, but uh, not the network of 192.6.34.0, uh, which is on area 2, and also the bridge of router 4 as well. So if we look here in the graph, router 1 is able to see this network because it's connected to it, uh, and then uh, the bridge interface of router 2 and then this network and then the bridge interface of router 3 but is not able to see this network here and not also the bridge interface of router 4 or let's say the network here when I say the bridge interface I mean the network which the bridge interface is related to okay so we have a problem that router 1 is not able to see anything from area 2 Okay, and, and the reason because area 2 doesn't have any connection with area 0 and there is no any ABR between the two areas. Okay, if we look again now to, let's, uh, let's see to router 4. And then also router 4, if we look here in the route, also we can see that uh, we see the connected uh, network to it. We see the router 3 and the network of uh, router 3 and then also the bridge interface of router 2. Okay. So indeed we have a problem, the problem is that router 1 over here is not able to reach anything in area 2 and also area 2 is not able to reach anything on the backbone area. Normally that's the problem because there is no ABR in between. This is okay. checked. Fix the problem by creating the virtual link, check the routing tables now, is it okay? So if we go here again, I clean a little bit here. So what we need to do, we need to allow the area 2 to be connected to the backbone area. And we have said that we have to create something we call a virtual link. So the virtual link will be over here. And as I said in the explanation, that is like a tunnel whereby the traffic will be from area 0 to area 2 passing through this tunnel and they will be like connected to each other. Okay. So because there's no ABR in between, we make the virtual link in place. Okay. So that's what we need to do now. To create the virtual link, as I said before, in this case, we need to have one router, which is the ABR router connected to the backbone, and another also router, which is also connected to the transit area and uh, the other area from where we need to get uh, the, uh, the routing from. For example, in this case, we have this one is the ABR. It is an ABR, and that's connected to the backbone area, which is very good, and he's an ABR and also connected to the area which is the transit but also here uh, router 3 as well is connected to that area and to here then in this case we can create the virtual link on those two uh, routers router 2 and router 3 so let me now just explain to you how you can do that I will go to router 2 and then uh, we go to virtual links okay and here is uh, router 2 virtual links and then I click plus and here I have to put the neighbor ID. In our case, the neighbor ID will be the router ID of uh, router 3. Because if we go back to this picture, we're doing the virtual link between router 2 and router 3. That means that router 3 here is the neighbor ID. And here is the router ID of uh, router 3, which is, we know it already, it's 3.3.3.3. .3 .3 .3. Okay, 
So that's why I told you we need to know what is the router ID when we want to configure visually. And then we put the transit area, in this case is area one. Okay, that's it. So that's the part of router two. We need to do the same on router three. So I go to router three and then I go to virtual links here. It's inside the OSPF. And then I create, I will say the neighbor ID is 2.2.2.2. And the transit area that I would like to have is area one. Okay, based on our diagram. And here we go. Now, if I go to router one now, and uh, we wait a little bit directly, you can see it directly showed now the network, which is uh, the bridge interface connected to it, 44.44.44.0, and that's on router four, okay? Um, so also he's now see the uh, 192.168.34.0. Okay, and if we go now to router four, there we go also to routing OSPF. And then also router four is able to reach uh, the uh, networks of uh, router one. Point number four is done. So the route table is okay now. Uh, to secure the virtual link, put a password with MD5. So if we look here again, when we were doing the uh, virtual link, it was without any password. And that's uh, some type of security issue that we may face. That's why we can also on MicroTik put a password so the neighbor router, which are doing the uh, virtual link together, they should match the same password in order to form the virtual link. Okay, mm -hmm. to do that, we have to go to router two again. And inside virtual link that we have created, if we double click on it, you can see here we have authentication. And uh, you have three types, none, which we have it now, there is no password. Simple, you put a password, but it's clear text. That means it's not uh, encrypted and it is better than none, but still, if someone is able to capture the traffic of OSPF, he can see the password. The best to do is to put MD5, okay? So you put MD5 and uh, you put the password, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's from uh, one side. And the second side, we have to go to uh, router C. But before I do that, let me show you that because we have put the password, then now directly the virtual link is down and the router one is not able to get any more uh, the routes from uh, the area two. Okay. So uh, we have to go to router three and we have to do the same. We go here and uh, we put it here MD5 and we put one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And, and okay. And then we go now to router one. Uh, in the routing table in a moment we will have to see now that the networks which are in area 2 will be seen on router 1. Okay, here we go. We can see that they showed up directly. So uh, the, the authentication has matched and then uh, the virtual link is again up, uh, it's working and then in this case router 1 can see the network of area 2. So to secure the virtual link put a password with MD5, we have done that and check if all routers are shown again, yes. That's how you can configure virtual link on uh, MicroTik routers, it's very uh, easy. It's only that you need to understand the concept of virtual link, why we need it and where we have to apply it. And then the configuration is just uh, uh, as simple as you have seen now. Okay, so this lab number 11 is finished. Now we have to go to lab number 12. It's also about the virtual link, but for discontinuous uh, areas. I hope that this lab has been informative for you and I'll see you in the upcoming